Let's talk about something that genuinely is important. And again, where, whatever side you're on when it comes to the battles uh, in Gaza, I think we're all on the right side of, of things when we say we don't want any innocent civilians, mm. particularly children, uh, to be dying, whether it's in, in shelling from either side, being used as human, human shields or getting in the way uh, and, and, uh, of, of the IDF attempts to oust Hamas uh, from uh, Rafa, as they want to do, is their next stage of their battles. But the imminent starvation of huge numbers of people is a serious concern and should be for everybody on all sides. More than a million people, according to your report, are at risk of basically of starving to death. Uh, we are looking at famine levels of catastrophic levels of hunger in Gaza. They say famine is imminent. This is a, a coalition of aid organizations, including uh, Oxfam. Uh, the situation, they, according to the integrated food security phase classification, they say that this is man made starvation and action needs to be taken. Uh, a senior UN, UN figure has said, we know that once a famine is declared, it is way too late. Now, we've got this battle between those who are saying, well, it's Israel who's stopping the aid getting in. Mm -hmm. Israel saying, we're not stopping the aid getting in. The problem is Hamas using uh, um, uh, civilians as, as, their, as fodder, effectively, in their battle with Israel. What should the West do? I mean, we've just had a phone call between Joe Biden and Benjamin Netanyahu. First phone call in a month, which I think is outrageous on both men's behalf, mm -hmm. given uh, how serious the situation is in Gaza. But what can, what can be done? Well, it seems like what the, 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 the Western community, such as it is, is sort of united in this message of supporting Israel, but also raising increasing concerns about the, the question of aid. It, as you've already gestured to, we need to take as read that there's an element of fog of, of fog of war even in this. Yeah. Um, there's kind of competing claims and counterclaims on both sides. It is important that when we're talking about Hamas, you are talking about an organisation which is willing to outright lie to propagandise and to put its own people in harm's way. Yeah, I mean, there's some question which... marks about the figures that the Hamas-run health ministry have been putting out in terms of the percentage of, of those who've died are, are women and children, mm. which is just, you know, many are saying is just, is just simply not, it's mm -hmm. not believable. No, absolutely. And that's something which I think we're continually reminded of. But of course, anyone looking at the situation there recognises that a way needs to be found to ensure that as much aid as is humanly possible can get through to yeah. those people, because these are not the people who launched October I mean, 7th. Not these these people, are the people no. caught in the crossfire the, of a horrendous I mean, there, there may be a lot of Hamas support started. from those people from us. We know that. We know there is a lot of support, but people who have been uh, propagandised for, for, for a decade or two, two decades will, 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 will feel that way. I don't care. Mm. I still want their children to be fed. Absolutely. I, I, it, it seems to me uh, a, a crucial point. Um, at the end of the day, People, you know, the, 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 quite apart from the human catastrophe and tragedy of anyone dying of starvation uh, in, in Gaza, you've also got the, the, the propaganda impact of that on Israel because they're, the world is going to blame. They get blamed for everything that happens there, even though Hamas, I would say, are, are the guilty party in all of this. Um, but, you know, but, but Israel needs to understand that, that this is not just about defeating Hamas fighters, it's about defeating Hamas ideology. And they're not going to do that if the whole of the Middle East and the rest of the world and the blame them for these deaths. I, I, see, I suppose the problem that confronts them, though, is the fact that they're being blamed for absolutely everything in this conflict. Anyway. There's been this jumping to conclusions. Even now, even after certain claims have been debunked, whether or not it was Israel, you know, blowing up that hospital, which was later found to be a missile from Palestine Islamic Jihad, or whether or not it was the kind of constant claims about are they exaggerating what happened on October 7th. It doesn't matter how many times those things have been debunked by the evidence, by mainstream newspapers, people who aren't necessarily even inclined to be pro-Israel have proven that a lot of these claims made by Hamas and their apologists are nonsense. They still live on. And yeah. I think Israel in particular, if we're talking about the sort of hearts and minds aspects of this globally, particularly where the younger generation is, they're, they're going to have a real trouble kind of dislodging and, some of these... And the BBC the doesn't help, does it, with a lot of their reports? We've had you know, some reports about uh, IDF fighters beating and uh, uh, mistreating uh, doctors at, mm -hmm. a, at a hospital in Gaza. Now, I wasn't there, you weren't there, we weren't there, but we, you know, we, we have um, organisations which we hope can try and get to the truth, but when the BBC relies on, as it's now emerged, on their Palestinian journalist sources, uh, most of whom have actually, you know, supported Hamas, they literally are, they're, they're, they're tweeting support for Hamas and and you know, celebrating you know October the seventh, things like that. I mean, it is simply untenable mm -hmm. that uh, an organisation is paid for by our taxes 
should be putting out that sort of propaganda on behalf of a terrorist organisation. And it's a recurring story, not just with the BBC, yeah. but all that New York Times a minute ago. They were found to have one of their photographers on the ground who had previously been posting not only anti-Semitic but pro-Hitler content on I mean, social hello. media. You would think that sort of thing would have been flagged up, but this is the uh, this is quite situation bizarre, isn't it? Uh,